Now, how can we justify uh, these rules? If we take the first, the first principle, everyone um, uh, is the exclusive owner of his physical body. That is, so to speak, the decisive, the decisive point. Um, now, whenever people have some sort of conflict, remember, we only need rules because we have conflicts with each other. Uh, then, of course, what we can do is we can just talk about having a conflict. We engage in, uh, in an argument. Um, we can also imagine that people could not engage in any type of argument. But, but then we would only have fights in this situation. That uh, either I kill you or you kill me or I do something to you or you do some, something to me. But there is no talk about any, any of this. What we, however, can do uh, is we can ask for a justification. Well, why did you do this? Did you, are you entitled to do this? We can say yes, yes and no, and so forth. If we couldn't do this, again, we wouldn't have any ethical problems. We only have ethical problems because we can just talk about ethical problems. So we have a conflict, and now we discuss uh, who is right and who is wrong. The discussion can also be, is there anything like right and wrong in questions like of this kind? But it should be clear that the starting point always has to be arguing. There's no other way that we can begin to build up an ethical system or to make a decision there is no such thing as ethics. Even if he would come to the conclusion there is no such thing as ethics, as right rules and wrong rules, even that point would have to be made in the form of an argument. So that's why some philosophers have called this, this is the a priori of argumentation. You must start with this point. Nobody can just say, no, I, I, I choose a different point. Because if he says this, I choose a different starting point. He already admits that, no, this is, of course, the point from which we have to begin. And then we see that if we argue with each other, I say something, then you say something in response, I say something back and so forth, and then we come to the conclusion either we agree or we don't, it, we don't agree, whatever it is, um, that underlying argumentation are certain things that are presupposed by argumentation. Arguing is not just free-floating sounds uh, that go back and forth in, uh, in mid-air. Arguing is some form of activity. It is an activity that is either interested in establishing, so to speak, a truth claim, somebody says this is right and somebody else says this is wrong, or it is a claim of uh, just or unjust, there is such thing as justice, there is no such thing as justice and so forth. So we are making truth claims. And what we notice of course is that arguing as a specific form of acting uh, involves that I have exclusive control over my body, my brain, my vocal cord, and I allow my opponent to also make exclusive control over his body, his vocal cords, his, uh, uh, his brain, and so forth. Uh, uh, and he then again in turn by talking to me and uh, listening to my uh, my point of view, again, takes for granted that uh, I have exclusive control uh, over my body and I only with my own means, with the means of my body, come to the right inside and that my opponent only by using his own physical body comes to the right conclusion or we both come to the conclusion that we simply cannot agree on this thing, but we do not fight. Uh, we do not use sticks or stones in order to make our argument 
all we make is uh, saying something and hoping that on his own he will come up with the right insight. So in this way we can say anyone who engages in any type of argumentation implicitly admits that all participants in an argumentation are the exclusive owner of their own physical, physical body. And what comes to, when we come to the other rules, let's say, and recall the purpose of rules is to avoid conflict. So if every person is exclusive owner of his own physical body, then all conflicts can indeed be ruled out. Uh, everybody recognizes this is his, this is mine, uh, only by invitation can I do something to him and so forth. All f conflicts, interpersonal conflicts involving bodies could be avoided if people adhere to this, uh, to this rule. Um, all conflicts can be avoided uh, if we adopt the rule that the first appropriator of something that was previously unowned becomes the owner because by appropriating something for the first time no conflict arises. Um, if we would have a rule for instance saying the second one becomes the owner not the first one then of course we would have a conflict. Uh, there's the first one is there and the first one of course would protest the fact that the second one is made uh, the owner. They physically clash with each with each other. Um, and, um, uh, and of course the same then applies for voluntary exchanges and so forth. So again, not to just draw that out for too long, um, again I think the argument here, the moral argument that I do is also a very simple and elementary one. Who, whoever and whenever we engage in an argument, then we implicitly recognize the right of each individual to be the exclusive owner uh, of, of his physical body and any other type of ruling could not be argumentatively uh, defended without running into some sort of uh, contradiction. Maybe one additional word. Now, people might oppose this argument by saying, yeah, but, uh, but people don't have to be rational and interested in argumentation. Now that is of course certainly, uh, certainly true. Um, but people who simply refuse to do this sort of stuff, we don't owe them an answer. Um, only people who engage in this type of activity deserve an answer. Uh, and if they engage in this activity, then we can give them an answer. Uh, that is, each one must be recognized as the exclusive owner of his uh, own body. Otherwise, we simply could not do what we do. And it is also impossible to just argue that we don't have to be rational. As soon as you say we don't have to be rational, this guy is already committed to rationality. So the opponents of this argument would have to be just shutting up forever. So they would never have to open their mouths, never claim anything to be true and right and something that somebody else did as wrong. But if they would never ever open their mouths, never ever engage in any type of argumentation, then they are for us nothing else but uh, stones and animals and whatever that is to say we don't owe them any justification but if they do engage in these sorts of things then we do have a justification for our fundamental norms. All right that should be uh, sufficient for, for introduction.